to start to make your technical drawing of your piece. You are going to view your piece, make sure to click Zoom Extents, and verify that the only thing in your view is the piece itself. At this point, I will hit Save to save any changes. And then under File, I would click Send to Layout. Layout, SketchUp Layout, is the program that will allow us to take our 3D model and make drawings out of it. When it opens, it will ask me what template to use. Under default templates, I have paper, storyboard, and title block. I'm going to click on title block. The first one in title block should be the Fox Ridge Letter Landscape title block. Click that and press open. At which point the page will open and your piece will just be laid on top. I'm going to first click the piece decrease its size so it takes up about one quarter of the space available. Moving it into the lower left hand corner because the first view I'm going to create is the front view. It's going to look something like this. To start my setup, first thing I'm going to do is right click on it and you're going to see this perspective option is checked. I'm going to uncheck it so it does not give me perspective. It gives me a true form. Now the next steps can be done either through the right click menu with some of these or under SketchUp model. I will be using both so you see both. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this so it gives me the front view. I can right click, standard views, and pick front. I can also pick it right there. The next thing I'm going to do is at the top here under Styles, I'm going to click where it says the little house icon and go to Styles. When I scroll down, you can find the one that says Straight Lines. Open that folder and pick the one at the top that is Straight Lines, 2 pixels thick. Your drawing should look something like this. Lastly, when I right click here, I'm going to write, I'm going to write, sorry, right click on this, and then I have scale. Now, there are some scales that are in here. There are also some scales that I have created. I already created two to one and four to one, which are actually the ones I'm going to need. If you need to create a scale, here's how you do it. With this selected, this option is only available in the side menu. Where it says current scale, I can drop this down, come down here to the very bottom where it says add custom scale. At this point, like I said, I've already created two to one and four to one. If I needed to create eight to one, I would change the first number to the whatever to whatever it is and click add custom scale. That puts it in the list. We're going to follow the same format that we do with fractions where half gets divided in half and becomes a fourth, fourth gets divided in half and becomes an eighth. You know, one to one gets multiplied, becomes two to one. Two to one gets multiplied, becomes four to one. Four to one gets doubled, becomes eight to one. Eight to one would get doubled and becomes 16 to one, and so on. So make the ones that you need, not necessarily just the ones that I have. As I look at this, it does a pretty decent job of almost filling up this lower left hand corner of the page at almost 4 to 1. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it to 4 to 1. If it starts to cut stuff off, this is where your center, uh, center uh, handles can be used to adjust the size and shape of the box. It is best if this blue box fits tightly around your view. That way it's not overlapping any other views. We want the front view in the lower left hand section. That is where it needs to be. To create the other views, I'm going to get in the move area. So I have my four air direction arrow. I'm going to hold the control key down on the keyboard, which adds the plus sign. So I'm now moving a copy and I'm going to move this copy straight up. I'm going to do it again by clicking down here holding control, dragging this time out to the side, straight sideways, to create the right side view. 
Lastly, I'm going to take the top box and I'm going to drag one out that becomes that will become the isometric view. We're going to move this around and play with that one individually in a moment. First thing I'm going to do is on my top view, either from my right click menu under standard views and click top, or I could have made the same change under over here. And again, I'm going to Sorry, I didn't mean to move that. I'm going to, again, um, make sure the window is tight around it and move it around. If I move it, I can hold shift so it only moves in a straight line so I do not move it side to side. We want to keep the views aligned so that this edge and this edge line up. I do the same thing on the right-hand side where I'm going to change to the right view. And I'm going to use the middle handles do not use the corner handles the corner handles will change its size and you'll have to go back and rescale it i'm going to change the i'm going to use the ones in the sides to type keep that tight around these three views are now set and will be ready for dimensioning the upper view the isometric view i'm going to drop down my box and change it to iso You'll notice right now it gives me a three-dimensional looking view, but it is too big. I could enlarge this to include everything, but I'm not going to yet. I am going to, just in this one, decrease the scale by one half. So if everything else is four to one, half that size is two to one. If my other options were two to one, I would go one to one. These were uh, one to one, this would be half inch equals one. So it's half the size of the rest. I'm then going to go ahead and pull the window tightly around my new isometric view, not cutting anything off. Move the last one. And I'm going to move this up into near the corner. Do not put it right on the edge because it will cover up your border and we don't want to do that. This is the way that your document should look prior to the final steps. The final steps will be filling out the title block and adding dimensions. To make this easy, I'm going to make a part two video that shows those steps.